So question 3.3 says isooctane can be formed together with propene nethine in a reaction in which one molecule of an alkane that contains 20 carbon atoms is cracked. So cracking means that you've got a long chain breaking into shorter chains. So if we've got an alkane with 20 carbons, it's C20. An alkane, so if it's got single bonds, then you double the 20 and add 2. So that becomes 42, so it's C20H42. We've got the formula of isooctane, which is C8H18. We'll know propene is prop is 3, so it's C3. Ene means it's got double bonds, so you just double that. It's CNH2N, so that's C3H6. And then we've got ethene, which is C2H4, so CNH2N again, so the two carbons become 4. Then you'll need to balance it. So if you balance it, um, then the best way to balance it is put 2 in front of the C3H6 and a 3 in front of the C2H4, and it should balance up the 20 carbons. How do products of the reaction show that a reaction is thermal cracking? Well, thermal cracking tends to produce alkenes. Um, catalytic cracking tends to produce rings. Alkenes formed. Deduce the number of monochloroisomers formed by isooctane. Draw the number of monochloroisomer that exists a pair of optical isomers. So the number of monochloroisomers of isooctane. I need to go back to isooctane and see what it looks like. So this is isooctane. So monochloroisomers. So I could have on those blue ones, I could have a Cl. So a monochloroisomer means that a Cl is replaced an H. So on that carbon, there's three H's and I could replace one. Now I've replaced the other one, it's the other blue one, it's exactly the same. So there's one there. So it could replace an H on that one or that one. Makes the same the same chemical. There's three bonds on that red carbon. So there's an H on there. So it could be that one. So that's one. Two on that one. There's two H's on that one. So it could be three. Now that carbon's already got four bonds. So it's got no H's. It's got carbons either way. So that one doesn't count. Uh, these ones have each got three hydrogens on each. But they're all the same. So it doesn't matter which hydrogen I replace with a Cl. It's going to produce the same chemical. So I've got one, two, three, four. Four different ways that the Cl can replace an H. Deduce the number of monochloroisomers formed from isooctane. I've done that. Draw the structure of the monochloroisomer that exists a pair of optical isomers. So if I draw uh, out um, the displayed formula of, or close to the displayed formula, of uh, isooctane it looks like this now we decided to replace this h here one of these two h's because now that c is a chiral carbon one two three four different groups from that carbon so that's going to have enantiomers it's going to have optical isomers no other h uh, being replaced by a cl will produce a chiral carbon one of these h's wouldn't do because we replaced one of these h's on the c and i've still got two h's on the c um, if I replace one of these H's, I've still got two H's on the C. If I replace this H, I've got two methyl groups still on the C. So there's only that H there, or that one there. You could have the one above it, both the same. Either one of these H's replaced with a Cl is going to give a pair of optical isomers. So these are going to have enantiomers, mirror images that rotate plane polarized light in different directions. In opposite directions, right. The isomer of isooctane reacts with chlorine to form only one monochloro compound. So I've got to look at something. I've got C8H18. Uh, that's um, isooctane. And I've got to draw it out so that whichever hydrogen I replace with a Cl, um, there's only one way of, uh, there's only one chemical formed. So what I'm looking for is something symmetrical, something really symmetrical. So it doesn't matter which H, up, down, left or right I replace, uh, it ends up uh, forming the same compound when I replace an H with a Cl. So I've done spoilers here for us. Look, it's directly symmetrical. I've got four in a line. I've got a, three methyl groups on this end, and I've got three methyl groups on this end. Directly, so it's absolutely uh, symmetrical, up and down and left and right. So it doesn't matter which H of these are replaced, 
and that methyl group is the same as this methyl group, which is the same as this methyl group, and it's symmetrical left and right, so this methyl group is the same as this one, same as this one. So all those H's are all uh, in the same environment. They're all sort of equivalent to each other. So it doesn't matter which H I replace, I'm going to end up with the same um, monochloroisomer. So if I replace one of, let's say, these H's here, if I replace all of the carbons with lines, so I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I've replaced all these carbon backbones with lines, and then I've drawn a CL off this one here. But you could draw your CL off any of those carbons in any direction you wanted to make the monochloro compound. You have to draw the skeletal formula, so you've got to draw it in this way.